Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in once again for another in our series of Story to Tell. Today we have a very special guest who will be sharing some pretty interesting facts with us. But before we get into that, just want to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, hit the notification bell below that you'll be notified of all the videos that we will publish and also you can be a part of our whatsapp broadcast list the number will be listed below as well all right so today we have joining us mr odin richards good to have you sir thanks for having me we are just gonna start with your early years you used to go to vase right yes. you used to go to vase i think so tell me about your early years at vase um, I guess it was any typical childhood. Uh, had friends, you know, played around, didn't do schoolwork. Mm -mm. Yeah, but Vaz, Vaz, what can I say about Vaz? Oh yeah, we were, had a very active um, sports day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the usual Jamaican high school, uh, sorry, preschool or prep school. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have houses and you know, it's a very competitive day and then we had um, with regards to sports we had the biggest thing for me before actually starting was um, prep champs mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't know at the time but mm -hmm. some of the greats aesthetically who you know, dom went on to dominate the world, they actually participated. participated. In, yes, so yes. one such is Sonny Richards, mm -hmm. of no relation. <laughs> to you. He's a distant cousin, maybe a well, second or a third cousin. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, she participated, she represented mm -hmm. um, for a short while. And um, about that time, I was mostly involved with football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it started out at Vaz and it went on to the community mm -hmm. while I was at Vaz mm -hmm. and um, started off in the goal mm -hmm. as a goalkeeper um, for both Vaz and Harborview and then I tried to transition into um, a I sweeper or a stopper, yeah. yeah, yeah, as I grew older um, and about to make the transition to high school. Mm -hmm. And um, your your father was very much involved in sports as well um, when he was growing up. Do you think you that was passed down? Uh, I think inherently, whatever the household generally likes, mm -hmm. the child tend to like as well. Mm -hmm. um, so he was involved with sports sports before, and actually, having heard his stories and some of the stories of other community members mm -hmm. it sort of built a legend in my eyes mm -hmm. you know that my want father to aspire to be right yeah. so i tried to you know try to fill those shoes to mm -hmm. see what it was like because those stories were so astonishing you mm -hmm. know so impactful yeah so you mainly focused on on football at vaz yeah um you went through representing the school as well and you did uh was it pep no pep wasn't around it no, it's, no, no. it's not even around it, yet it, it, it was Jesus. common entrance <laughs> before i went oh it was still common entrance well well before mm -hmm. before me and then um i think i was the first year of the gsat, of the GSAT. Yeah. okay and how was that experience doing a first major exam you studied and all of those things no, <laughs> no. i mean it, it, it was made to be a big deal yeah but I don't think I took it very seriously, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yes, my parents would, you know, say you need to do your schoolwork and mm -hmm. they would pressure me. But personally, I didn't, I didn't understand, mm -hmm. I should say. Yes. I didn't understand how big a deal it was. There was a lot of... I think most, not, not most, but a lot of boys at that age, what, about what age you were at that, about 10, 11? Mm -hmm. What, nine, ten? Nine, yeah. yeah. The boys normally don't get the big deal as to what this exam thing is about at that age. I mean, everybody made a lot of noise about it. Yeah. You know, it was so there was some sort of suspense and anxiety towards it. But mm -hmm. in terms of preparing seriously for the exam, 
I think I could have done better. Yes. Yeah. If I had known, you know, so it's I more understood. Of your ability that you yeah, to it was that. more of like, oh, we're doing this exam to go to high school, and yes, we wanted to go to a good high school, mm -hmm. you know, and we had, you know, ideas of where we'd like to go. So you passed the exam regardless of the um, scan to God for want of a better word. And yes. You placed on it. Thankfully. Yes. Thankfully. You, 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 you went through and you went to judges. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that experience going to First Farm. Uh, so First Farm, hmm. mm -hmm. never really thought about it. But um, First Farm was a bit, I don't know, it was weird. It was, it was different, mm -hmm. you know. Any it's, other it's, friends from Mars went oh, to yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you had, so had company. We had company, so, you know, seeing familiar faces was a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting new friends was a, another thing. But then now, George is at the time, well, even now, mm -hmm. um, there's a prestige that came along with it, yes. you know. and. There was a, a lot of expectation on my part. Mm -hmm. The pressure you know. was coming on. Uh, yeah, so I was like, okay, so no, this is George's. And, you know, trying to familiarize myself mm -hmm. with this new environment and seeing mm -hmm. what exactly, you know, mm -hmm. was expected of me. Yeah. What about um, the schoolwork pressure at George's? Was it that more manageable or more difficult than that what you used to at Vars? Um, it was a little bit more intense mm -hmm. than at VAS. Uh, we took on more subjects mm -hmm. and um, there was no more or a lot less babying for want of a better term. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the workload was dependent on you and not necessarily you and teacher or mm -hmm. you and your parents. So you had to do most of the work. Um, yeah. At, at, um, at your own time, balance right. your time. And, right. Yes. So you 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 got into sports at first farm and at those things that you did. Uh, at George's, no. I was still um, involved with the football team mm -hmm. or at um, Harbour Harbour View. View. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was an intent to try and you know make it for the high school team. Um, I don't know why, but I didn't make that decision just yet. And um, maybe about third, third form, mm -hmm. I decided to pick up sports again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so you had put it on fairly little while? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in third form, there's even much more pressures with the amount of subjects that you're taking on. How was that and taking up back sports at the time? Well, um, I didn't really think about the pressure. It's, uh, it was just trying to be more active. Mm -hmm. um, third form, however, it was a little bit easier because we, were, we started to narrow um, with subject area we'd like to participate in. Mm -hmm. And um, with regards to balancing it and sport, um, training was not very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot easier than I think it would have been if it was a lot more intense. Mm -hmm. So a typical day would include um, school up to about 2.30 right. and then training up to about what time? So um, I can't remember really how many days per week but I don't think we trained every day for mm -hmm. the week but for the days that we trained, we trained for about maybe two hours mm -hmm. so it would be from maybe three o'clock to five, five yes okay and um you went on um up to fifth farm as well and you were representing the school at that time as well right so by this time i i, I was doing two sports for the school mm -hmm. um i was doing rugby and i started track and field mm -hmm. trading and um by this time, I also had fewer subjects, mm -hmm. and again, maybe a young boy mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't prepare as well as I thought I should yes. for the CXEs. You know, it's only getting to sixth form where I start to say, "Okay, this, these this exams serious. are yeah, it's serious." <laughs> <laughs> 
And you say, you might not have a place to, to lay your head. Right. <laughs> and, you know, good parents made it very uncomfortable mm -hmm. for me to be at home just lying around. Good parents yeah. made it uncomfortable. Yeah. Good parenting. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So as long as you're doing school work, yeah. you're very comfortable. My God. <laughs> So that, that means you had to do much more work up into the night that you were not yes, probably used to. Yes. And all of those stuff. Right. And, you know, having them checking on, you know, at your heels, so to speak, mm -hmm. was a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it then, you know. I just wanted to watch TV or go outside and play or mm -hmm. not study, you know. But So you did your CXCs, you were successful, maybe not as much as you wanted, and you oh, went on yeah. to... <laughs> Went on to six form, right. and you even had even more pressure at that time. And you were still doing the, the two sports. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I was still doing rugby, and uh, but by this time I was more um, astute when it came on to studying. You know, I I finally the time management has improved. Right, time management improved, seriousness towards the schoolwork improved, and. At that time, I believe, because of the subjects that I was studying, mm -hmm. um, my interest in the subjects helped to keep me focused, mm -hmm. you know, and to develop the, 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 the nature of studying and being prepared and, mm -hmm. you know. So how did good. you get involved in track and field? It, it was actually through my physics teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a farmer thrower. Uh, he's now Dr. Dwayne Hensowood. And, um, he saw me and saw my belt and thought that, you know, it would have been a good way to explain certain physics principles to me mm -hmm. while benefiting the school so, as a sportsman. So use one bird and kill two stones. Use one stone and kill two birds. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So tell us about your first competition. Yeah, so my first competition was Jamaica Track and Field Meet held at JC. And um, I remember it clearly because it was a very nerve-wracking meet for me, and um, the performance was very good in the end. So uh, at about that time, before the meet, I was throwing about 36 meters in the discus, and I believe the qualification mark for champs was about 38. And um, I remember going to the meet, being very nervous, and not knowing all of the technique just yet, because I was still learning, I managed to throw 40 meters, mm -hmm. you know, and that, qual that not only qualified, but it put me in good standing to make the finals mm -hmm. um, that year. So that was your first com competitive event, and you move on from there. And was the next meet? Uh, so usually meets are week by week, mm -hmm. and um, depending on your event and the availability of the event, you would be um, competing on a particular week, mm -hmm. and then you do that from January to about. March when there is Boys and Girls Championships mm -hmm. and if you're doing well enough you go on to about June for the Junior Athletics National Championships. Mm -hmm. Okay so back to, to school now so you, you you left Sixth Farm and you went on to UTEC was it? Right. Okay and what what was the career path that you had chosen that you wanted to do at UTEC? Well, um, what I wanted to do was animation, and not many schools in Jamaica at the time offered um, that course. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next best thing was um, computer science, mm -hmm. which was offered by UTEC. Mm -hmm. So because of that default, I pursued um, computing, mm -hmm. yeah, for want of a general term. Yes. And then um, later on went on to focus on networking mm -hmm. as my focus. Special Specialty, yeah. Right. Okay. And you, you, at the first year at UTEC, um, how, how was that in terms of your, your fees and stuff? And uh, well, there was no scholarship for me at the time. I was recruited to go to UTEC. Um, however, uh, my parents took out a loan and then, you know, from there they paid, paid their way. Paid their way, okay. Yeah. So, um, so you were recruited um, to go to UTEC? No, it wasn't. You weren't? No. Okay. So UTEC basically did have any sporting history for you then or, or anything? I, I didn't know much about um, UTEC and 
because by this time I was still green mm -hmm. or a youngster to, to athletics. I didn't understand, you know, where the athletes train and it, I didn't have deep knowledge mm -hmm. um, about the different events and all of that. Same. I knew th throwing, mm -hmm. I knew sprinting because that, that is what Jamaica was famous for. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know, like, I knew some of the big names, but I didn't know where they trained or where they were. So, like your first year at UTEC, you so did any sporting? Um, right. Yeah. So, first year of UTEC, I found out, I uh, spoke to the coach at the time, and found out where the training was and at what time. Um, it was about 5:30 a.m. That was the first shocker. Mm -hmm. Like you're not used to that type, type of training. <laughs> no, no, no. I, it was it was weird because most of my sporting events or sport training before then was in the afternoon yes the only morning training i had was for the club mm -hmm. which was harborview and that was about 10 a.m mm -hmm. you know so having seen that it was weird but i did make the effort to try and be there early mm -hmm. and that is where i started to see the big names the stars the asaf or the Sharon Simpson, mm -hmm. you know, the Nesta Carter. Shelly was not yet um, mm -hmm. a, 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 a world-renowned star, mm -hmm. but she was there as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you started training with the hope that you are going to do the discus, continue, continue right. the discus right. at UTEC. Okay. And you, you actually participated in, in a competition for, for them. That right. was in the first year as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I was pretty good coming out of high school. I was one of the top um, throwers coming out of high school at that time. And um, that made it a little bit easier to make the transition to the intercollegiate level. Um, this is where all the colleges uh -huh. um, and universities compete. Yeah. And at that time, I would have been one of the best going into intercol. Uh -huh. So, your, your first competition at UTEC, was it, um, what month was that in the first year? Was it in the January? Yeah. yeah, so it would have been the same meet. So usually what happens with these meets, it's a combination of both high school mm -hmm. and university, um, with some events sh sharing majority of the events for high school mm -hmm. and other events, the majority for um, colleges. For colleges, okay. So um, you moved on now, second year UTEC. Um, the workload start getting harder in terms of the, the academic aspect. Oh yeah. Um, but by this time, I'd, I had already made the decision to you know do well at my schoolwork, mm -hmm. and because of that, I I had the, the requisite focus that was needed mm -hmm. to and the do well, right? Because. By this time, I had to be going to training on my own and, you know, taking care of schoolwork. But my parents weren't as um, driving as they used to be mm -hmm. as a younger um, child. But, um, you know, I, I took care of it. Mm -hmm. So you continued um, with these 5.30 training. How, how often were training sessions? So. I, I started out from Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. and then uh, as I progressed, finished school, I started to train on Saturdays as well. Mm -hmm. So what were the, 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 the distances you were throwing while at UTEC? You said you were um, in the in the 38, 40s at, at um, high school. Right. So I was still in the 40s at UTEC, but this is because of the the weight change. There is a weight change from a junior athlete to a senior athlete for males. Mm -hmm. And um, because of the weight change, I stayed in the 40s for a bit. And then as I progressed, I went on to the 50s in the discus. Mm -hmm. So when was it that you um, discontinued the discus and moved on to the shot put? Well, I was throwing both the disc and shot from high school. Mm -hmm. uh, my only medal from Boys and Girls Championships was actually in the shot put. Chart us now along with your with your progress now on the shot put. So you're now focusing on it now. You're at about 19, thereabout meters. 
walk us through the 19s, the 20s, going up and the competitions that you participated in? Okay, so my first warning shot <laughs> was about the World University Games. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where I, I won and I competed against the world best university students. Mm -hmm. Which country was that in? Uh, this was held in Shenzhen. Shenzhen, that's yeah, China? That's China. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, I won. I threw, I think, a personal best of 1993. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, it would have been the following year, which would have been 2012, mm -hmm. where I tried to make the Olympic team, but I was a few centimeters short of the qualification mark. And then uh, th by this time it was about, I was doing about 20.3 meters. Mm -hmm. And then now uh, my first world level um, competition was the world championships held in Russia, mm -hmm. which was also another baptism of fire. Uh, I didn't perform very well, I didn't come last. But you know, it was a learning experience. It was a different format from what I was used to. And, you know, I took my lessons from it. Mm -hmm. So I was about 20.9 meters at this point. Mm -hmm. And then my next major competition would have been, well, I had a few in one year. So this was about 2013, 2014. I had the Pan American Games. Now this included the Americans, which usually don't send their top flight athletes to the Pan American Games. Mm -hmm. I won that event with a national record. The first competition was Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Right. Commonwealth, I won that event with a, a national record. And... Um, that would have been what? About 2005? No, man. <laughs> 2014. 2014? Okay, yeah. way, way up, way up, way up. 2014. Mm -hmm. So I won that event in a national record. I uh, broke the Commonwealth Games record. I uh, set an area record as well. And then the following year would have been Pan American Games 2015, mm -hmm. where I broke the national record again and then went on to the World Championship, mm -hmm. the, where I got a bronze medal mm -hmm. okay, in and Beijing. Okay. Yeah. And how much, how much were you throwing at, at Beijing? So at Beijing, I equaled the national record which I had broken at the Pan American with 2169. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was 2016? 2016. 2016. No, 2015. 2015. Right. Okay. And how has it been going since then in terms of your, your progress and competition? I, I think it probably might be ups and downs because nothing is right. perfect in life. Right. So it, it had been... Uh, I had my first major injury um, that following year. Uh, well, I had it treated that following year, which was the Olympic year. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say it was a successful year. And then later on that year would have been the Olympic Games, which would have been my first. I happened to qualify and um, made it to the Olympics that year. Made it to the finals as well. And I placed eighth. Mm -hmm. So, although it would be considered a down year based on the previous performances, mm -hmm. you know, I was pleased for that comeback. Mm -hmm. Because basically, you're basically the eighth best straw in the world at that time. Right. Yes. Right. So that is no small feat if you really look at it that way. But at the same time, you still need to push harder and don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to come here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, the following year now was London, I believe, which was. Um, so this is 2017 now, mm -hmm. and that was, it started off a very spectacular year. Mm -hmm. uh, went to the Diamond Leagues, through a national record, and um, this was in Africa, in Rabat, where I threw 21.96, mm -hmm. um, hitting almost a 22 meter. Um, but come London, they started to reinterpret a rule mm -hmm 
which caused me to try and change how I normally perform. Yes, so you had to change your technique. Right, I had to change how I'd approach mm -hmm. the throw. And it caused me some troubles and I didn't make it to the final. So tell yeah. us um, a little, a few facts about the shot put, you know, the implement itself, um, what is the objective? Mm -hmm. just, just give us some pointers for, for the average person out there who just see somebody has this ball and just throwing it. Give us an idea, the weight and stuff. All right, so to give a more focused look, I'll tell what the different events are. Mm -hmm. So there are four throwing events. Yeah, four throwing events. You have the discus, the shot put, the hammer, and the javelin. Yeah. Right. Um, the discus is a plate-looking um, implement, one that looks like a plate that you'd eat from. Mm -hmm. The javelin is a stick, mm -hmm. and the hammer, which is the least popular in Jamaica. Yeah, that is the ball with the, the ball string. and the string. Yes. Now the shot put is just the ball. Just the ball. Just yeah. the ball. The shot put for Olympic. And by Olympic, I mean senior athlete, weighs 16 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it can have a varying diameter, mm -hmm. meaning the distance around the ball. Yes, that's pretty heavy. Yes. To be holding <laughs> in, your, in your one hand like this. Yeah. OK. And, and the, the circle, how, how wide is that circle? And if you step on it, give us all of those. Like a bit. All right, so the shot put is thrown from a circle. and. It is different from the discus in that it has something called a stop board mm -hmm. on the front of the circle. Mm -hmm. Now for all throwing events, there are parameters from which you can throw. And any, any touching or any part of your clothing or any thing that comes out of that um, section, mm -hmm and touches outside of that, it would be considered an illegal throw. Mm -hmm. So, the shot put circle is about 2.14 meters, mm -hmm. which is about seven feet. Mm -hmm. um, the rules are is that you must throw the shot from the shoulder blade mm -hmm. and you must exit from the back after throwing it. You have persons that use left hand as well, right? Yeah, you use whichever hand you, Whichever, you can throw. Hand. Yeah. Okay, so you, you put it here, you don't let any of your clothing or anything touch the circle. Touch outside. Touch outside of the circle, mm -hmm. okay. So I see some persons um, do a spin and I see some persons up not to do a spin. Mm -hmm. um, what is the difference in that? The two techniques that an athlete can use or have been known to use mm -hmm. As long as you can, there's any, you can basically, you can use throw with any technique as yes. long as you obey the rules. Yes. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the glide, mm -hmm. but usually, traditionally, there are two techniques, which is the glide and the rotation. Mm -hmm. um, the rotation, as it suggests, is a rotational movement where the athlete spins, and the glide is a more linear movement, mm -hmm. which uh, pushes from the back mm -hmm. and then throws forward. Okay then. So let's go back to um, your competitive um, area now. So you are now representing UTEC at times and Jamaica at times. What was your first competition for, for Jamaica? you remember that experience? Um, my first competition from Jamaica would have been maybe from high school, which mm -hmm. was the Pan American Games. Mm -hmm. First um, international competition. First international competition. Tell us about that and where was it and how did you do it? It was in Brazil and I did very badly. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, as I said, at that time I was young, I, was, I didn't understand the sport, I didn't understand clothing, what you should wear, you know. So I, I took clothing that was bigger than my size. It was, it was just all a new learning experience, a mm. developmental meet for me mm. personally. I didn't know what international standards was like. I didn't know what other athletes were throwing, what the world record was. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, was, I was new. That would have been at what age? That would have been... What, 18? At... About, yeah, about 18. About 18. Yeah. So you did very badly? Yeah. You come last? No, um, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I think I did. 
Oh, nice. So, I think I did. So you just use that as a, as a learning or a stepping stone. Oh, yeah. It, it was almost a, like a baptism of fire, so to speak. Yes. So it, it caused me to, you know, be more ambitious. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to throw and, and come last and yes. that's it. Uh, you, you want to do better. You want to retell the story yes. with a better ending. So what was your second um, competition for Jamaica internationally? Second would have been, I believe it was under 23. Mm -hmm. yeah, by this time, it was about my second year at UTEC. Mm -hmm. And I made it for the shot put. And, and the discus, mm -hmm. yeah, I did both. And I was throwing about 55 meters with the, the discus, discus and 18. I think I did a personal best there. Mm -hmm. And this was in Miami, Miramar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're gradually improving mm -hmm. as you go along. And at that point when you had indicated to us that you wanted to focus more on the shot put, what was the first um, international competition after that point? Mm -hmm. How well did you do? Well, by this time I was maybe not necessarily throwing for Jamaica, mm -hmm. but I was competing under the banner of MVP. Mm -hmm. And um, it may have been about 2011. 2011. Right. So you're now um, aligned to uh, a track and field club. Right. MVP. So usually athletes will compete for UTEC. Mm -hmm. You know, they are coached by no Paul Francis, but then um, Stephen Francis. And he's also the coach for the track and field club mm -hmm. um, MVP. And um, so it's generally assumed mm -hmm. that once you you take your MVP. Okay then. So that 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 mix that you um, a mix of athletes that you have seen in the in the industry coming in like the names you'd mentioned before. You now started to rub shoulders more with them in right. training and everything. Right. How was that experience? A little intimidating. Uh, first, um, it was like being starstruck. Yeah. Because at times, a soccer player had the world record. Mm -hmm. and, you that know, was a 9.77? Yes, it yes. was about 9.77 at the time. And, you know, seeing a superstar every day in person, you know, and getting to know him and all of that, that was a, a bit of, you know, being starstruck and, you know, very mm -hmm. exciting. But as soon as you go on, you get to realize they're, you know, mm -hmm. the normal people. Normal people. And, yeah, and they're cool. Yeah. Yeah, so even though I'd won the previous Commonwealth Games, uh, this Commonwealth Games was very good in that the level of competition had increased. And um, in the competition mix, we had the world champion, the current world champion mm -hmm. at that time, um, which was Tom Walsh, you know. Mm -hmm. And in true Tom Walsh fashion, he broke my record in the qualification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, in that competition, I threw 20.8, which was very good. You know, that would have gotten me a medal at the previous Commonwealth Games as well. Mm -hmm. But this time, it was only good enough for fourth. I was mm -hmm. edged out uh, by a Canadian, Tim Nidow, uh, by a few centimeters for third. Mm -hmm. So you barely missed out on a barely missed out on a, a medal. another medal there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, come 2019, there, this was now. Doha, unique in itself again, because it was held on the other end of the year, which was closer to our winter. Mm -hmm. uh, but the coolest time of the year in Doha would have been in September, mm -hmm. um, around about that time, late September. Um, so a lot of changes had to be made to try and put forward the best performances mm -hmm. um, at that time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, Started off well again uh, through 20.97 at the Diamond League in Italy, mm -hmm. um, which was about June that year. So because of the increase in performance in my event, um, you had now seen the performances raising above 21 meters and hitting your 22 frequently. And um, that made them put the, in the qualification um, level to about 20.9 meters. Mm -hmm. No. 
um, which is very tough. Mm -hmm. Usually, for the past couple of years, it would have been extremely low, lower than that. Uh, in Doha, however, I threw, I think, my second best performance ever um, in the qualification, which was 20.07. Uh, the only performance the better that was the qualification in 2015 where I threw mm -hmm. 20.55 to mm -hmm. make it to the finals. So from your common wealth competitions and the World Championship and the Olympics, could you just give us a brief summary of um, your accomplishments thus far? Well, I've, I've medaled at the CSE Games, the Commonwealth Games, the Pan American Games. Mm -hmm and world championship mm -hmm. okay and place in the top eight in the olympics pretty impressive pretty impressive um for a young man how old are you know if you wish to um 31 i think 31 you think yeah for the check <laughs> check double check so if you weren't doing full-time um track and field what would you be doing i think i'll be in the corporate area working in 95 in the computing field computing field so in the in the near future do you see yourself probably transitioning to that if you come to a stage where you think you can no longer compete competitively or you would more go into a coaching area uh, <laughs> yes i'd want to go into coaching but it wouldn't be um for you know uh, as my main source of income. Mm -hmm. It would only be secondary, you know, just to be a part of the sport. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of occupation, I don't think I'd see myself in the 95, having been an athlete for so long. Uh, I'm now looking, or I'm hoping that I'd venture off into um, business. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about your business venture ideas that you have on the horizon. Well, uh, in school, I learned that introduction of new products to an environment that does not have that product would be just as effective as creating that product. I'm looking to you know, provide some wholesome entertainment um, for Jamaican uh, public, uh, maybe starting in my community, maybe with a gym or a sports uh, center where it would probably include football, you know, with some good surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe putting on a few um, street meets mm -hmm. where I could now introduce to the Jamaican public uh, shot put mm -hmm. and show them what it would be like, you know, as a thrower coming up. Mm -hmm. So, on the other end, in your spare time, when you're not training, what do you do to have fun? Oh, video games, um, shooting games, mm -hmm. racing games. Um, I like watching movies, mm -hmm. you know, I have a little bit of interest in, in media, mm -hmm. so I do a little video editing sometimes, mm -hmm. um, learning new stuff, sound engineering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, as we close, um, I would ask you to give some person who is watching an encouragement or there who probably is interested in track and field, give them a a tip or two as to what they can do maybe at their young age to cement their self and their footing earlier and how they can basically go and be successful in the area. Wow. <laughs> Just briefly. Um, well, I think for any athlete to be, for any athlete to be successful, they must first love what they do, mm -hmm. you know, and um, Take, it, take the time out as a youngster to try as much as you can to see what you'd like. And then once you find it, stick to it. Mm -hmm. Stick to it, be consistent, and your love will help you to be determined. Mm -hmm. And if it should be, you will be. Okay. And for the rest of the year, just give us a um, preview what the competition is coming up for 2020. All right, so we should have had the World Indoor Championships this year, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, because of the outbreak in China, China yeah, it was postponed. postponed yes. um, the next thing would be the Olympics, which mm -hmm. will be headed to Tokyo. And hopefully by then, uh, all of East Asia and 
so forth would have had dealt with or you know contained the virus and mm -hmm. it would be a, a successful Olympic. That is scheduled for, for what month? Uh, July. July, okay. All right, thank you Odin for sharing with us. Thank you we very much. We are delighted to have you. Thank you everyone for tuning in once more to our show, A Story to Tell. We had a very interesting talk today with Mr. Odin Richards, um, representing Jamaica and doing well. I hope you can learn something from his experience. And until next time, if you have not yet subscribed, remember to subscribe and to check out our Facebook page as well and our WhatsApp group. Until next time, have a blessed day.